Imagine that you owned a car company that was producing a sports car. Just the parts of the sports car cost $70,000 and that doesn't even count labor and manufacturing costs. And you go ahead and you build that sports car and after it is produced you go ahead and you sell it for $50,000. $20,000 less than just the cost of the parts. How long would you stay in business going about that way? Well. In the same way, our monetary system is not going to stay in business very long. Every time you receive a nickel in your change, that's what Thomas Jefferson is telling you. Today, the metal price for each nickel is seven cents, and that does not count the labor and the manufacturing costs our mint has to come up with to produce each five cent nickel. We cannot stay in business very long spending over seven cents for a product that's worth five cents. So what will we do? Probably what we'll do is in the very near term find a cheaper metal, much like Germany did after World War I. Before World War I, Germany's coins were made out of gold, silver, copper, and nickel, just like our coins used to be. After the war, Germany had no gold in their coins, no silver for their coins, and even the value of the copper and nickel had exceeded the face value of their coins. So in 1922, they produced this coin. They made three mark coins, which are about the size of our half dollars. And they didn't make them out of gold, silver, copper, or even nickel. They made them out of aluminum. And these are, they're light. They're, they feel like almost play money, toy money. And you see right there, there's 1922. Three marks. But that's not even the bad news. The bad news is what they produced a year after making this coin. And they made this one. Which you see is almost the exact same size, the exact same design. This was made in 1922. Three marks, remember? This was made in 1923. Let me flip these on the other side and I'll show you. The difference between these. There we go, 1922 three marks. One year later, that exact same coin, again, made out of aluminum, made out of something that wasn't worth a thing, was worth 500 marks. That's how fast inflation can work. But that's not even the bad news. If you look over here, I do not have a 1924 coin to show you because Germany didn't even bother to make one. Inflation was, was so bad. What was made instead was very colorful, pretty notes like these. These are called Note Notgeld. That's German for emergency money. They were made not by the central government bank, but they were made by local communities as a way to survive. There are literally hundreds of different types of Notgeld that people like to collect. I just have a few of them out here right now to give you a kind of taste of what they look like. But this is how local economies had to survive because they could not count on the money that their government had produced for them that was even just made out of aluminum. The debasement of our own nickels that we talked about before is telling us that we're, we already have headed down a bad inflationary path and that's bad enough. And add to that the tragedy and the unrest in the world. And the U.S. dollar is indeed on shaky ground. But you might not know that local communities in the U.S. have already pr begun producing their own forms of American note geld, emergency money. Here's two examples. This is called a Potomac. It circulates in the Washington, D.C. area right now, today in 2011. Here's another one. They're called Berkshires, and they circulate in Massachusetts. I found a list of just all dozens of different local currencies that are here on all sorts of different states in our country. They don't have the exact same purpose as the German Notgeld, but they are just another sign that our current monetary system is in bad shape, that it's on its last legs. So I'd encourage you to protect yourself before what happened to Germany's mark happens to our dollar. Thanks for watching.